What's going on, YouTube? It's James Chime, my Fantasy Battle Reports, and I got another game for you today. This is Road to ETC, Road to Salamanca, whatever the number says in the box down below, because I totally forget these numbers, and then I just kind of look back and put it in later, guys. Welcome to another Battle Report, guys. This is the last Battle Report of uh, ESC. ESC is the singles tournament. Now, I kind of stopped giving a rat's ass on the ESC, mainly because, uh, I, I hate to say it like this, but the, the organizers kind of had a sloppy job on ESC. They, they screwed us up on the third round. They only gave us like an hour and 30 minutes, hour and 20 minutes to play the game. Um, and it just kind of put a sour taste in my mouth. And then it also kind of affected my gameplay on that game. Well, there's other things that are obvious things that popped up and, and messed with my game on that game. And then um, I got crushed on the game after that. So at the same time, I'm kind of just like, it was good practice. It was good to like <laughs> loosen up and and, and um, get ready for this, uh, for ETC that's coming up in the next game. So guys, I'm excited to get this game out here just to get it out of the way. Now I'm playing somebody who is a good friend of my own teammate, uh, Lucas. So this is Jose Ramon Rico. Okay, and guys, my phone is going off a lot. Uh, can't, I don't want to answer that because then it starts going off even more. Anyways, so, uh, Jose, it was Jose, right? I'm not saying the wrong name. Let's see. Yes, Jose. Uh, I think he went by Ramon. So Ramon is playing Kingdom of Equitane. Uh, and he kept on saying, for the lady, and he kept on saying, the real king, the real heroes of Equitane. Whenever somebody would run away, it's r the real heroes of Equitane. Or the people who died in chaff, as chaff. Anyways... <laughs> I found that funny. I don't know why I find that so funny. It was just really hilarious, like, the moment that it would happen. So, uh, right now, I look through the pictures. I actually, this is the second time I'm recording this video. I recorded it the first time. Then I realized, after I finished, like, the half hour or 40 minutes that the video took to record, that my microphone wasn't plugged in. Yep. All right. So... <laughs> This time the microphone's plugged in. It's recording properly. I hope it's proper volume for you guys. Not only that, though, guys, this is the third video I'm trying to record today. I'm trying to get this out to you today because I want to get as many videos as I can out to you before I go to Strength in Numbers this weekend. Anyways, um, so let's go over. I'm going to try to make this quick, and I also have a tribute at the end of the video that i got to go over, um, and you guys will see what it's about when I get there. So, um... <clears throat> Really quick, my magic, I got Pyroclastic Flow, I got Scorching Salve, I got Immolation, I got Enveloping Embers. None of it really matters because it doesn't even get to be used that much in this game. Uh, for Pyromancy doesn't really do much against one of Armored Knights to begin with. Um, I got Will of the Wisp, Raven's Wing, and Wheels Turn for my, my Witchcraft. For my opponent, he has Divination, and then he also has Shamanism. So for Shamanism, he has Break the Spirit, Savage Beats, Drum Beat, Totemic Summon, and then he has Awaken the Beast and Scrying. Um... As you can see, we deploy like this. Now, we're playing a flag scenario, okay? And on his side, on the left, he has a giant knight bus. I think they're like knights of the realm or knights of the... What, what, whichever ones they are. He has a big bus of them. He has his BSB in there. He has his general in there. He has the, the, the witch in there. I know people are like, oh, hey, it's a damsel. It's not a witch. No, dude, it's a woman who does magic. That is a witch, all right? Next to them, he has some Yemen outriders for chaff. Next to them, in the center, by themselves, in their little black island, by themselves... He has a unit of Grail Knights or Questing Knights. Whatever the knights are that do double wounds to monsters. That's what they are. All right. Next to them on the Paper Hill, that is another unit. Yemen Outrider unit. And then he has his, another unit of the double wound knights. He has more Yemen Outriders. And he has two units of, I believe, like Knights Aspirant or Knights of the Realm. They're just two units of five. Now we're playing Flag Scenario. And I picked those two units as two of the units. And then I picked the one that is in the middle of the field in the Black Island by himself, themselves as the other unit. I figured they were getting into combat. <clears throat> now, as you can see, he, he brought his own terrain on his display boards, or on his, his movement trays, and his movement trays are all actually built so there's always an inch on the side of them, either way. Um, and as you can see, here's more close-up pictures of, of his other guys and his crotch. Now, he took, yeah, he took first turns. I'm gonna go to turn one, Kingdom of Equitain. Like I said, I'm going to try to make this fast. I'm going to be honest with you guys, a couple of these pictures are out of order, so I'm going to have to kind of figure it out as we go along. 
good news is I already recorded this video once. I kind of saw what what problems there were, and it'll be less mumble mumble and rambling by me. So turn one, he goes ahead. We both vanguard up, and we he vanguards and he moves his Yemen outriders like chaffing up my common goblins and my chariots on the right side. Um, I'll go back to this picture real quick. I'm sorry, going back to this picture real quick. <coughs> I put Zod inside the unit of the Black Horse. The main reason for this is because I want to be able to um, be stubborn just in case I get charged early on, right? Uh, if he doesn't kill all my all my guys, right? But I don't know. It could happen. Who knows, right? Um, I left my chariots behind the hill so they can't be charged by that main bus, but the char chariots can see past the hill on the right side. I put my goblins and common goblins in the middle. I put my cave goblins behind my chariots. I put uh, Krom in the middle next to the common goblins to boost up any damage potential they have. I had my, my chaff up there on the line just basically to run out there and be chaff. My forest goblins are running by the forest because that's what they should be doing. And then I have Koopa and the spider on the right side. Their, their original plan was to hunt the, the flags I'm supposed to get. Alright. So as you can see he moves up like so. Magic phase got nine power dice. Goes ahead and he does scrying onto the unit of chaff that is blocking my common goblins. Now, that's basically all he does. He doesn't have shooting. He doesn't have anything else, really. So we're going to go into my turn. Orcs and Goblins, turn one. All right, and let me see who the hell's spamming me. Carl Eric. Carl Eric Hansen. Um, let's see what... See. You're interrupting my video, Carl. And not only that, there's another girl here. Uh-oh. Anyways, anyways, I'll get to that later. I'll get to that after the video. Um, so, let's see what's going on here. All right, so he moves up his chaff. He, then it's going to start off my turn. Orcs and goblins turn one. Orcs and goblins turn one, excuse me. Um, so the thing is, I wanted to charge my common goblins, or, or at least use my common goblins to threaten his main blocks. I'm going to go ahead and charge, but I don't waste my walk. Okay, ooh, I killed that mosquito, like right in midair. So... My whole goal here is to get Krom. Even though those guys do double wounds to, to monsters, he needs to hit me on, wound me on sixes. So I want to get Krom into that unit in the middle. All right. If I can get Krom there, it's strategically a good spot. I also want to get rid of his chaff. So I charge his chaff with my goblins. Okay. He holds. Then I charge the wolf riders because the wolf riders need to get out of the way into his unit on the right. And he holds, of course, their immune psychology. Then I charge Krom into the chaff, terror check them, they run. So here's the picture of them after they got the terror check, which I was allowed to charge my chariots into, I think, the chaff or to the unit in front of me. Now, the chariots don't need that far of a charge. It looks like a 15, just eyeballing it. The problem is I fail that charge. Okay? And not only that, I fail all the fucking charges. The only charge that actually went through was the fucking wolf riders god fucking damn it it wasn't even that far nobody needed a hard number to get to but they all failed the charge so the wolf riders go in alone they go through the ruins and actually nobody died in the ruins get into his fucking uh into the flank of his uh questing knights or whatever they are grail knights they're gonna die a horrible horrible death magic phase I got nine power dice magic i go ahead and i give these guys the wheel turns i give them the wheel turns because i'm I want them to hit me on fours and wound me on fours instead of wounding me on twos. Figuring no matter who they charge in the next turn, they won't be able to do that much damage to me. And not only that, but I'm also doing these spells to give them minus one movement. So every time I do a, a witchcraft spell, I'm giving them minus one movement to make their charges harder. Um, go ahead and I do a raven's wing. I pick up my cave goblins. I move them over here. He's using these guys to chaff my general. And what I end up doing is uh, just throwing out my fanatic. So I'm going to release the Cownado, pick up the Cownado, throw him through the unit, and I use the Cownado and his buddy as um, charge blockers. So if he charges, he's going to have to take 46 strength, 5 AP, 1 hits on his main block. Of course, they're going to blow up the Yemen Outriders. They pop up. And uh, basically, now he can't charge my main bunker with this unit. Um, if he does, he could. And basically, I'll do good damage and, and hopefully see what happens. Anyways, um, and that's about it. They're going to sit right there. I don't know why I took so many pictures. Going to go ahead and uh, combat over here. Combat. He's just going to rip apart my dogs. And it's going to allow him his turn. Now, as you can see where, where his hands are by the tape measure uh, or behind the tape measure, 
he has both his flag units, they actually turned sideways and started running the opposite end of Koopa. There, he's like, for the lady! And he just kept running to the opposite side. He's like, the real heroes of Equitane. And I'm like, shit, I'm not going to be able to get him. The thing is, they're movement 8. Koopa's only movement 7, so no matter what, I am not going to catch them with Koopa. There's just no way mathematically I'm going to be able to catch them with Koopa. So I'm going to have to do something else. I'm going to have to use Koopa and the spider for something else. I'm going to go ahead and start off turn 2, um, Kingdom of Ecotane. Kingdom of Ecotane turn 2. He charges both units of the Questing Grail Knights. I'm going to just mix them all together, the Questing Grail. And uh, he's going to charge them both into Karam, which uh, hurts. But maybe Krom could deal with it because if he charges in, he has charged two banners and two ranks. He'll have five combat res, but hopefully he doesn't get any wounds off. And if he doesn't get any wounds off, Zod and, and the BSB are close enough where I could potentially try to make him stick on like a four, you know, maybe a three. But not only that, but um, if I do any wounds, I might actually do some damage, right? But he charges them both and he charges his giant bus into, I believe, my goblins. And he actually fails that one uh, because of the minus two movement I gave him. So he fails that charge. Both the, the grail questing knights get in. And that's how it looks. Um, he has a bunch of, I think I shot his, yeah, I think I shot his other unit. That's what the other pictures were. Um, I shot one of his Yemen Outrider units, and I knocked out four of the, the horses, but only one lived, which kind of is annoying because it bites me in the ass later. Uh, Magic Phase, he got nine power dice. He goes ahead and gives these guys crying. I don't care because what I really want to stop is this next spell, which gets off, which is Awaken the Beast. Now he's strength seven. Motherfucker. <sighs> so, uh, combat. I am not shitting you. He swings all these guys in. First, he swings in the unit that doesn't have that uh, strength seven, and he does like... I think he does no wounds. Then he does the other unit that is strength 7. And I am not shitting you. There was not one 6 there. But there was like 7 5s. And he just pops Krom. Oh my fucking god. Kills Krom out to it. Fucking to the wound. Nobody panics. Everybody sticks there. But he's going to overrun. Now he overruns both the units into the forest goblins. Right? He wants to, he wants to assassinate my pyromancy. Which is smart. Which he should do right so he overruns kills um to get into the forest goblins it's gonna go ahead and start off my turn orcs and goblins turn two and this is a very crucial t turn all right i'm gonna go back to this picture here with Krom there just to show you what's happening now koopa and the a-rock are both looking at the flank of his grail knights okay now you gotta imagine the grail knights are where my right before the forest but we're touching the forest goblins okay i could charge the flank of him the problem is is that Koopa will, or eventually what's going to happen is he's going to swing and kill the shit out of my forest goblins. He's going to kill just, in all, in all honesty, he ends up killing like 15 or 16 of them, truthfully. So what ends up happening is, is if I charge in with Koopa, kill a couple of his knights, charge in with the spider, kill a couple of his knights, and he ends up winning by like 15 or 16, I'm going to lose Koopa too because Koopa is going to run off. Not only that, but my, at least my spider is stubborn. All right? Here's the big issue is the spider stubborn on six but bsb is right there so i could charge my bsb out of the unit or or not out of the unit charge him into the grail knights but i don't think i'll win that combat to be honest the only reason i don't think i could win it is just because there's two characters in there he has two characters in there that'll fuck me up the other problem is zod is on the wrong side of the table zod is nowhere near the spider to give him a, a leadership check all right so to remedy this I come into, I, I do charge the spider in. The spider doesn't need much. I mean, like, again, you gotta imagine, the Grail Knights are right at the edge of the forest. Spider needs only, like, it, it's auto in. It cannot fail the charge. What I end up doing, though, is I end up calling out the Wog. And this is ridiculous. This is the only time I've ever done this. I called out the Wog just to move. Just to get that plus one to move. I don't need any swift strike charges. I don't need anything like that. I just need that plus one to move. I move Zod out of the unit. You don't see him. I charge in the spider. I charge in the A-Rock. And I move Zod out of the unit. Closer to the A-Rock. Now, I'm still about... I, I, I am not kidding. Currently, I am 23 inches away. Or 22 inches away. After I moved. Okay? If I didn't call out the Wog, it, this my, my trick is going to be impossible. But I charge in. Throw in the A-Rock here. I am exactly 22 inches away right now. Okay? As you can see, this is a picture of uh, Zod in the unit before I moved him out of the unit. And then the, the Fnatic came this way. 
Um, and then, I, as you can see, I move Zod this way, turn the cave goblins to hide behind the hill. I use my black orcs actually as chaff to block up his uh, unit up there. Now, part of this was to set up a trap. I'm um, hopefully the, uh, looking back at it, it work, doesn't really work because he's just going to chaff up my my chariots. But if he charges in and uh, overruns closer, I'll be able to charge him with the chariots. Um, I move Koopa to the flank or uh, the rear of the other guys. Now, the the unit that I need to kill is the one that is in the middle, the one that is not in combat with the Aerock. That is one of the flag units. So I move Koopa this way. I turn the, the common goblins around to face the flank of these guys. And I figure I'm going to lose the forest goblins. And basically he's going to have to run one way or the other. He's going to have to chase them. Or he's going to basically be stuck. All right. So uh, Magic Phase got four power dice. And I'm like, you know what? Here it goes. I use all four power dice. I don't, e or I don't even have a picture of it. And I do a boosted Raven's Wing. And I move Zod close enough to the spider. Now I'm stubborn on a re-rollable nine. All right, close combat over here because uh, there's no shooting because everything's basically in combat. Um, I challenge, with, I challenge with my wizard. He accepts with the lady. <laughs> the lady smacks my wizard, gets a wound off on him, but he lives. He lives, so there's a chance. Um, over here, close combat. I go, or he does two wounds onto my spider, which multiplies to four wounds. Okay, okay. Um, I go ahead and I swing away with the spider. Spider kills off like three guys. Then the goblins go and the goblins kill off two more. And then, uh, yeah, so I actually killed a good chunk of knights right there. And I was actually pretty impressed with the spider doing so. I'm going to be dead honest with you. I'd never expect the spider to get through armor that much. And he, she did a good job. She did a really good job. Uh, but right now he's up like 19 to 20 combat res on me. And then after I do mine, it's still like a 15 or whatever kills a bunch of my guys. I don't even pull him off the tray because he killed so many guys. The only thing is, uh, counting the dead bodies, there, we had to make sure that the, the last remaining guys were still touching both units, which creates a, uh, a crooked angle. Okay, I'll tell you why. So, I'm going to flee. Of course, that unit auto breaks, okay? But the other unit stuck with the stubborn spider. Spider sticks on a stubborn nine. She's good. She's really good. But now, where you see my hand is, or my dad's hand, I think that is, is that is where the point that the goblins run the center to center runs so he says he's going to ch chase now actually that's his hand that's who it is he's on my side of the table he wants to chase because what ends up happening is he wants to see if he could chase reform and go behind zod or some shit right which i'm telling him dude that's not how it works he figured it out we figured it out it doesn't really matter right so he chases, he catches them over here, and then he reforms his other unit like so. It is his turn, so he has one chance to get the fuck out of Dodge, which he will. All right, it's going to start off his turn. Uh, Kingdom of Ecotain turn three, I think this is. I think it's three. Yeah. So he charges into my Black Orcs, of course. Then he moves the other guys as far as much of March he can away from Zod. All right, which Zod still has a plus one movement on him from the turn before when I gave him the Raven's Wing. Okay. Magic phase, he got six power dice. He goes ahead and he does, I think, maybe like a ring of fire onto my chariot switch. Okay, whatever. Or maybe he shot him with the Yemen Outriders. I don't know. He got one wound on him somehow. All right. Close combat. He wipes out my black orcs over here. And it's going to start off my turn. Orcs and goblins turn three. All right. So I'm going to start off with this pitcher over here. Um, I charge my common goblins and koopa into that unit that was fighting the spider they didn't wound the spider great they're gonna he, they're gonna die okay i charge zod now zod needs a 10 on swift stride to get into the rear of his knights that are running away and i roll like a nine ah that sucks so zod just stumbles forward his knights are gonna get away i have one more chance of maybe catching his knights so i move my chariots closer to this way i figured i'm just gonna make a bunker i'm gonna make a defensive bunker in this corner and then i turn my ca cave goblins this way to shoot apart his chaff and currently they are safe from his big night bus all right um so this is how it looks uh or magic phase magic phase i got uh eight power dice and then what i'm gonna do is i'm actually gonna go ahead and do a boosted raven's wing pick up my chariots and move my chariots over here thinking back about this i probably should have done that with zod i should have probably moved zod up a bit more but um yeah i should have done it with zod god damn why did i do that anyways hindsight's 2020 ignore the fact that dead crom is sitting right there 
So I move my chariots up this way. Um, anyways, um, and then uh, shooting, shooting. I go ahead and shoot these guys. Only kill two of them. They don't panic. They're gonna be in my way. This sucks. This is the the constant thing with this game is I don't kill enough of his chaff. I kill a couple, but I don't kill them all. Um, and what really sucks now is that I don't have um, Baxter. Baxter is great at killing chaff, but he, Baxter is nowhere to be seen anymore because Baxter is dead. Really, really dead. All right. Um, I kill his knights. Don't even look, think twice about it. I turn uh, the spider around. I have the chariots looking this way. It's going to go ahead and start off uh, his turn. Kingdom of Ecotain turn four. So, <laughs> uh, this picture here. He goes ahead and he screams out, For the lady! And he throws the lady out of the unit and puts her right in front of the spider. Like, fuck you, I am running away. He's trying to get his, his scoring unit out. Now, I do have a legal charge with the chariots into that unit, and I still need a 10 to get in. Um, so it's possible. I need to roll a 10 on Swiss Stride again to try to get into these guys again. He, um, the other thing I can hope for is that he fails his terror check with the lady, runs away, and then I'll be able to charge the spider in, which is huge. Huge. All right. Uh, he goes ahead and he does a really smart move. He moves his guys on top of the hill so my cave goblins can't hide anymore. And he starts moving his chaff in the way of my uh, common goblins in front of Koopa and all these guys, right? So he basically is out chaffing me. That is the truth. He is out chaffing the hell out of me. Magic phase got five power dice. He goes ahead and he uses all the dice to get a totemic summon up. This changes the game for me. I cannot hide my co cave goblins anymore. Kills four of them with the breathing fire attack. And it's going to go ahead and start off turn four orcs and goblins. Turn four orcs and goblins. I charge those chariots in. I'm like, fuck it. I need a 10. I need a fucking 10 and I roll a 9 again and he passes his terror check with the spider god damn it <sighs> so over here I already uh, I'm already convinced that I'm going to lose my cave goblin unit so I turn my cave goblins to face the chaff that I'm going to shoot right I turn my or I didn't even have to turn the common goblins I just leave the common goblins there to shoot the other chaff it really sucks I'm going to waste 40 something shots to kill one guy um and uh, I move my wizard out of the unit because maybe he'll live and save me some points. Uh, Magic phase got eight power dice. I go ahead and I don't know what this picture is. I did this on the first recording. I used probably five dice on something and he stops it. I think that's what it is. I can't tell what's on that dice. Anyways. Um... Shooting phase. I go ahead and I shoot, and I kill the one guy in front of the forest, uh, the common goblins, no problem. Then I shoot all the shots into the guys on the left, on the bottom side, and I only kill two out of the three. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm not kidding. This is literally the one guy that needed to die the most, the most, and he fucking lives. Now I'm going to lose the cave goblins, and he's going to chaff me, no problem. Over here, the spider <laughs> just eats the fucking the witch and it's gonna start off his turn kingdom that contain turn four or five around there i don't know whatever the number says down there um magic phase he got seven power dice he charges into my cave goblins pops my cave goblins that's all that really happened um and uh it's gonna go ahead and start off I, where did i leave koopa yeah he faces that koopa right there and whatever he did in magic he put it on koopa um and uh it was a hex i don't know what it is i think it was I just wanted to hit one, the dangerous terrain one, which doesn't really matter to Koopa because Koopa is Strider everything, and I don't think he knew that. All right, uh, my turn, Orcs and Goblins turn five. I reform my goblins to be in a bus, basically to hold steadfast. So I'm just going to have to deal with them that way. Um, as you can see, I moved everybody, I mean everybody up like so. I'm keeping them as a unit. Everybody's out of range to get charged except for the common goblins. Common goblins are trying to draw him out. And what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to hold step fast, counter charge with everything. The one thing he didn't see was because he, he thought my uh, Koopa was going for his main bunker was the fact that Koopa, I really just used him to get over to that side to, to, to um, actually get those flag units. And he's like, shit. And right now, the way I angled Koopa, the way I put Koopa, is that the one unit one unit could get away no problem the other unit has nowhere to go he has to get charged by koopa it's a long charge but there's nowhere he could get out of line inside of koopa and koopa has the chance of getting in um 
The problem is right now I'm down two flags. His other flags get away. They um, hit behind the building, and that's why I was just like, forget those guys. I'm not going to be able to get them behind the building now. So I just go ahead and face this way. Um, and if I can hold step fast, I can counter charge with everything. Um, basically, uh, shooting, nothing really happens. Go start off his turn. Kingdom that contains turn five or six. He turns this way, basically blocking his own guys. Um, I think we get told that there's like a 10 minute warning or whatever it is left So we're just basically gonna call this the last turn of the game So he goes ahead. He moves this way. He throws up magic. He gives Koopa frenzy <laughs> He gives Koopa frenzy because he wants Koopa to fail a frenzy check and charge into his unit Right because the BSP is nowhere near him. So I'm just like yeah, fuck it. It's my last turn last turn of the game uh, I don't even think I had a legal charge here anywhere so I go ahead and I do a charge with Koopa, and I'm like, oh, fuck it. Koopa needs double sixes. Double sixes to get into that unit in the far up top. If I fail, no, it doesn't matter. Nothing really changes in the game. So I charge. I get double sixes in. Koopa goes in. <laughs> Koopa, you fat bastard. Making the last minute of the game so much more fun. Because not only that, Koopa has frenzy. He has extra attacks. Koopa shreds that unit. Leaves one knight alive. He, you know, I have a charge, a rear, um, and then I have four wounds so I'm at seven combat or six combat res seven seven combat res uh, he has a banner so he loses he runs Koopa chases the unit down and kills him and that is the end of the game in the end of the game though I am I have a huge loss um, it is a 14-6 um, I got six points unfortunately I couldn't get that other scoring unit if I got the other scoring unit it would probably been a 10-10 um, because I would have got the points plus the uh, plus three minus three, um, or the plus three minus three wouldn't have mattered, so it would have been tied. Um, but eh, it is what it is. Uh, he's a good player. It was a fun game. I, I was cracking up about it. I was cracking up about the fact that Koopa got in at the end. Anyways, 26 minutes didn't do too bad. It's gonna probably drag on a couple more minutes longer. But um, anyways, guys, if you hit if you like this video, hit like, hit share, hit subscribe. Uh, let me get all the Warhammer stuff related stuff out of the way really quick. Uh, guys, if you want to show your support and you like my channel and you would like to show uh, that that you know your appreciation, uh, you can always go to my Patreon and sign up. Anything helps out a dollar to two dollars to five dollars to ten dollars. Anything helps out. Whatever you can afford helps me afford going to these tournaments. Not only that, but the tournaments out of the country really, really, really took a chunk out of my wallet. And um, guys, uh, anything really helps out. And that would be just wonderful and hugely appreciated. And I really do appreciate everybody who signed up to my Patreon at the moment. Um, guys, uh, besides that, this is the last ESC video I have coming forward is only etc and etc is a different beast every game it, you'll see some crazy crazy tactics in some of those games and um i'm really proud of putting out my etc games i am looking forward to putting out my etc games um besides that guys and not only that it's a team atmosphere so i'm glad i got these games out of the way kind of got my out of, out of my you know all the the, the nervousness and the can I do it, can I not do it, you know, and in, in, all, in all honesty, I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys, you know, there's a lot of uh, pressure on, on my end where I'm thinking to myself like, you know, last year I went to ETC, it was a list that I didn't choose, it was a list that I'm going to get my ass kicked, or not get my ass kicked with, but it's a, it's a list that I'm playing towards somebody else's play style, and not only that, I ended up losing every single game. I did not win one fucking game at ETC last year. Now, some of it was bad dice roll. Some of it was bad luck. Some of it was just I sucked, right? N not saying that I sucked as a player, but I just sucked with the list, and I sucked at those games specifically. So it really put on a lot of pressure, um, especially since I'm on, like, a... Um, uh, one of the ninth age Facebook groups and they're like talking shit saying like how I got rock last year and I'm not a good player and I'm just thinking to myself like you know and I know I don't listen I normally don't listen to a lot of haters I don't but it, it's not that I don't that I think I'm a bad player or a good player hell I just won Buckeyes Buckeyes is the number one tournament in the United States but it's the fact that the pressure's on that I have like a point to prove that I have to play a good game um, so getting a couple couple wins in the ESC kind of you know like huh kind of gave me some like you know okay I could do this I could do this you know what I mean it kind of encouraged me a bit and then uh, going towards the ETC you're gonna see a totally and I told my dad because again my dad is still heckling me at this game he's like you lost another game what's going on and I'm like you know what dad it's okay it's okay I got the bad dice rolls out of my way I got I and I, and I told him that night I told him that night dad 
coming tomorrow, I'm going to have a totally different mindset. Okay, I'm going to have a totally different mindset, and I'm going to play a harder, more tactical game. And you, I promise you, this is not going to happen. So it, you'll see it when I go into ETC in the next game, guys. I am looking forward to making those battle reports. So uh, MVP of this game is going straight to the A Rock. A Rock killed the whole unit of Grail Knights, quest, Grail Questing Knights, whatever they are. Um, A Rock stuck on the stubborn check. A Rock was threatening people. A, a Rock killed the the, the witch. Um, so I give the A Rock a ton of credit. Koopa gets an honorable mention for making me laugh. Uh, besides that, the prophet, the witchcraft prophet. Uh, also gets an honorable mention now guys uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this picture up here at the 30 minute mark here uh, guys if you don't know this is Dan Pruitt uh, Dan Pruitt is the you guys might know him as uh, during all my 8th edition videos and pretty much my first year and a half two years of 9th edition videos he is the high elf player that I play every week or every other week Dan is a great guy uh, he's a funny guy he, he's done so much for me um, in the game and outside the game as well he's a good friend um, I met him I met him playing uh, Warhammer uh, he was playing Warhammer against his uh, nephew Max okay and Max plays Skaven and Dan would play High Isles. it was the Isle of Blood set whatever right um, and we invited him to do a Dice Dojo tournament and ever since that he became a regular he, a regular all the time uh, if you guys seen me at tournaments all year last year and the year before I never went to a tournament without Dan Dan was always the person that went with road trips with me and my brother well I have some bad news Dan passed away on Monday um, he had some complications he's he has uh, um, you know I'm gonna be honest with you guys he you know he, he uh, he had a bunch of health issues um, I don't know exactly what they were we never really talked about it we always talked about the game you know um, but um, it got the better of him and uh, the last tournament I went with him to was WCW last year um, and that was was it WCW? I don't even think he went to WCW I know he went to Michigan GT he went to Michigan GT and he got last place which he got X-Wing for they gave him an X-Wing box and uh, they said maybe you should play a different game <laughs> uh, not that I should laugh at that but that's I mean it's pretty funny um and then he started playing X-Wing with Max as well. Um, and that was the last time I saw him at a, at a Warhammer game. Um, after that, he uh, he went to the ER. And then after that, I just saw him playing Magic, uh, the, the, the card game, uh, at the Dice Dojo. And when I asked him, you know, why isn't he playing uh, Ninth Age with us downstairs? It's basically because he felt like he was too weak to carry his army. Uh, which is, you know, it's another sad thing, but it, 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 it just happens, you know, and, and it, it really does suck to lose somebody at that caliber. He's a really good guy, and, um, but, um, you know, I figured I'd make a little tribute at the end of this video, uh, for Dan, because Dan was, he was a silly guy. He was a good guy, and he was, uh, I have some great moments with him. I have, uh, good news is I have great moments recorded on videos with him um from him flipping out at me from him taking off uh, at wcw from uh because without saying a word at lunch there's just a bunch of funny things that it, uh stories that we could always share with dan about dan but anyways just wanted to throw this out here now if you guys want to uh show any support to dan you guys could uh, leave a comment down below for his nephew max um and i'll tell max to check out this video after you guys fill it up with comments but um i'm glad i i think Max would appreciate it. Okay, guys. So, um, I'm gonna just leave it here for a moment. But, um, guys, I appreciate all the the support in the channel, and I appreciate you guys showing support to Dan, Dan's family, and uh, any any nice messages would be appreciated, guys. Anyways, uh, take care. Till next video. Till ETC, guys. Peace.